Hey, what is going on guys? Core X Designs here and welcome to another tutorial on 3D Studio Max. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the uh, basics of studio setups in, in, in case of cars. And this is not like any other tutorial I've ever watched on the internet. Um, so, you know, they, they, what, what usually people do is they make a studio for this car and then add some lightings and some indirect illumination and some light catchers and all that stuff. I personally don't do all of that. So, what I'm going to show you today is how I like to, you know, render out my cars and other stuff. So, this, uh, this uh, you know, trick, rather what you call it, uh, I was, you know, I just discovered while, you know, browsing on the internet, you know, I just saw, just saw a texture and literally the idea just struck me you know you could use it so I'm gonna be showing you guys what I do actually so um, what you see in front of you is the card that I'm gonna be showing you this from so I have my McLaren MP4 model which is done complete and it's gonna be released pretty soon as, as soon as the render completes render is gonna take 360 more hours and I'm not joking uh, anyways um, uh, what you need is a, mod is a model of a car and you should be ready to go. So I have my MP4 model here, and I also have a viewer physical camera looking directly at it. So as you can see, that's that's what the viewer physical camera view looks like. I'm just gonna move over some of the touch. Okay, so that's that's a good place to start. Okay, so um, we want to light up the scene. So the way we do this is um, before we do that, we're we're gonna create a ground plane for this for this plane. So I'm just gonna say change the view type from viewer physical camera to the top view and that way we can see what's going on from the top and into my create panel I'm gonna go standard primitives and create a plane in the top viewport now this plane needs to be pretty large I'm just gonna make it as large as I can possibly okay and moving into my modif modify panel the length is 600 I think we could stick with a thousand by one thousand should be pretty large enough and these dimensions may differ depending upon the dimensions of the car that you've modeled maybe you model a car to with real scale dimensions and then this would you know basically be smaller okay so onto my left viewport I'm just gonna you know move it down now until we find that it rests perfectly on the uh, the wheels of the car. Now, one th little trick is that uh, when you when you position things that you know so your model should sit on them, uh, you should not you know just go ahead and blindly put them in here. You need to have some intersection between them because that's how real world uh, dynamics goes. For example, nothing is absolutely on the surface. There always is some distortion. So that's what uh, we are going to we're trying to compensate in here, and that's why we are not going to be doing it right here. Now, now that's too much distortion. This, you know, somewhere like here should do pretty fine for us. Okay, so now what we're going to do is create some textures for the for the car, for the floor here. So I'm going to hit M to bring up my material editor. My material editor. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new material slot. And I'm just going to go to and create a viewer material. Okay and into my diffuse channel I'm gonna click on this box next to diffuse and from the new pop window that's gonna appear any moment now uh, we're gonna be choosing gradient okay so we choose gradient here okay so first thing you're gonna do is uh, you wanna uncheck real world map size and uh, yeah also in 3D Smash 2012 things are usually made with real world dimensions and for example this plane was made with real world dimensions so the way you undo that is just go ahead and uncheck <coughs> a real world map size under this plane even if you have collapsed this plane into an editable poly you can always apply a UVW map and then from here you can uncheck real world map size you know that's, that's just an alternative I'm just going to drag the new material onto my floor and I'm going to click on this button here that says show shaded map and viewport and move and that's where I can see my map okay I'm gonna change the type of mapping from uh, uh, linear right here from gradient type from linear to radial and that way um, our pl at the center of the plane is gonna be more white than the ones at the sides also if you wanna lower down the uh, now what I'm planning to do is basically make a, make a white spot where you know basically where the car stands or rests on so for color number two I'm also going to change that to black and that way the spot is going to be much closer to the car okay like that and uh, 
that should pretty much suffice and what that will do basically is um, if you hit uh, the camera here you can see that uh, that actually makes it look like uh, you know the plane is being illuminated by the lights above it even though there are no lights but don't worry we will be creating lights to create those reflections here and the overall result will be very satisfactory okay so I think this is gonna be pretty much it for color number two position, yeah, this is important. You can lower down this amount, and that way the uh, the spot will be a lot shorter. So what I'll do basically is, you know, try to minimize it as much as I can. Uh, point point five should be pretty good. And okay, so that is looking pretty good. Okay, moving on to my create, you know, the <clears throat> perspective view. I'm gonna go over to my top view, and in the create panel lights, I'm gonna create a V-ray physical of your light I'm sorry and I'm just gonna make it a thin strip of light just going through my car approximately half the size of my car okay and I'm just gonna hit the hit L to bring up my left viewport and under this light setting I'm just gonna move it up not too much just a little uh, something like that and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead moving down and check invisible before we actually you know make quite a cop quite some copies of these lights so make sure that it is invisible and the multiplier is at 30 you can change the multiplier but the way I, I like to do it is you know just take invisible there and then change the distance from where this light is being cast now make sure we're using this light only for the reflections not too much I mean we are using for the illumination also but mainly for the reflection so you don't want it to be too close uh, you, you know too far otherwise the reflections won't be visible so I'm just gonna make it some of the moderate length something like here and that should do pretty much good for me moving on back to my top viewport I'm gonna make you know just move it to the center here and holding down shift I'm just gonna make a copy somewhere over here and make sure it's a copy not an instance hit OK and then just go ahead and make another copy right there so we have three copies right here now you, you you notice that I did not make this light directly on the car, but you know just outside the car. But even though it is outside the car, the reflections are going to be applied onto the the doors here, you know this part right here, and that's going to give it some more reflections and make our fake lighting look good. So by fake lighting, I mean the you know the whitish thing here, and that's that's what you know makes it look like it's it's being illuminated. Also, I'm just going to take the plane color to black, and I'm going to freeze the plane so that I don't accidentally move it. So I'm just going to right-click this plane, go to Object Properties, into General, and I'm going to, uh, you know, Manage by Object, and uncheck Show Frozen in Gray, and then hit Freeze and hit OK. So that way, I cannot actually select that and move it. Okay, time for the final Vera Light, and this is going to be basically the main reflections, you call it. Okay, so I'm going to moving move back to my top viewport and I'm just gonna make another copy of this light hit OK make sure it's a copy and I'm just gonna size it up on the x-axis or whichever axis you want to and make it make it like a really large light you know the size of your car and uh, size of all three lights combined okay and now onto my perspective view now I'm just gonna take this light and move it up there we go and using the uh, uh, rotation tools I basically want to align it so that it faces the car from from somewhere over here and then you know faces the car from there also if you're having trouble to move this to the correct location you can change the uh, reference coordinate system from view to local and that way you can easily move it around so I'm just gonna position it somewhere I guess here best way to notice where the light is pointing is to go into the frame of the light and then you can see what it's looking at okay so I think this is pretty good to make it somewhat closer. And yeah, this is going to be pretty much it for the lighting. Now all you need to do is hit F9. Before you do that, make sure you are in the camera viewport. And all you need to do basically is hit F9. Now what our floor will do is because it's, it is black here and the environment is also black, the floor would, uh, will slowly fade into uh, my... Uh, my environment and my environment is black by default as well so what that will do is basically create like a fake fall off and that's gonna look really cool alright before you actually go ahead and do the render I'm just gonna go ahead really quickly go over all of my render settings that I use so I'm just gonna go into my render settings dialog box okay I have VRA set as the default engine 
and I'm, I'm rendering out at 1280 by 720 resolution. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much it for this segment. Moving on to the Nvidia tab, this is where the important part comes in. I'm, I'm using adaptive subdivision for the anti-aliasing filter type, and anti-aliasing filter is on and set to cattle ROM, and that's what I use. Uh, that's what I usually use. The environment is the GI environment. This is the default color that we have. The multiplier is set at 0.7. And the reflection environment is also black, but you don't really need to do this because of the series setup that we use. But you know, you can do it if you want to. Moving on to color mapping, this is going to be linear multiply by default. I'm just going to change that to exponential. That's the way I like to work with. And you make sure you don't check clamp output, we don't want that. The dark, bright, and gamma are all one. Moving on to indirect illumination, this is some of a twist and test I did and it turned out to be really successful. Using this lighting setup and the studio setup we don't actually need a secondary GI engine because there is nothing bouncing off of the walls here. I mean there are no walls so nothing is being bounced off. So for secondary bounces I'm going to choose none here. We don't need light cache, we don't need it. The first one is going to be radiance map for sure. Also um, everything here is default, no ambient occlusion, the irradiance map setup is custom, so uh, it's custom. Uh, the minimum and maximum rate are same, and that allows us to do only one pre-pass before the actual render. All this is done to, you know, decrease the render time and, you know, trying not to compromise on the quality. So, you know, if you if you go ahead and follow the, the exact same settings, you might not get the same result because the, your materials might be different, but you know the result will be very satisfactory according to me you know for me this works like wonders so you know no no secondary map and only one pre-pass and all that you know really lowers down my render time and gives me fantastic results so this is going to be minus three minus three spherical subdivision is going to be 40 and 30 for interpolation samples and this is all default i guess and yeah this is pretty much it for the settings Yep. So yeah, yeah. One more thing here for you. The default noise threshold was 0 0.01, and I look usually like to you know lower it down to a lower lower value. So I'm just gonna do 0 0.005. That's just what I, what I like to do. All this is uh, default. Okay. So the dynamic memory limit is the limit uh, is is the maximum amount of RAM that we can use to render out your things. Now I. I only have 2 gigs of RAM on my computer and I usually give it the entire RAM to process on. Now, if you are planning on doing something else while the rendering process is going on, for example browsing the internet, going on Facebook, or whatever you want to, make sure you don't give the, your entire RAM to this, otherwise we might just use the entire RAM and the other process is going to be pretty slow. But in most cases we will never reach this limit. But you know, it's probably not a good idea to take risks in that. So if uh, if I was planning on using Chrome, I, w I would probably give one and a half gigs of RAM to V-Ray, and then for the half gig of RAM that 512 megabytes that I have, I could use it to browse the internet. So um, I, p I usually don't do anything else while the running process is going on, so I usually give it the entire RAM. But yeah, if, you, if you're giving it the entire RAM, you know, try not to use the computer too often. Uh, that really slows down the other process and also the render. So that's enough set for the dynamic memory limit. Re all the rest is default, I guess. Yep, everything else is default. All you need to do, do now is hit render and you get the final image done. So I'm not going to be doing render right now because the entire pro process, every frame is actually taking half an hour to render. And I know it's really slow, but it's it's in a part of part of problem of my computer because I just have two gigs of RAM. So I'm just going to show you the final render that I got from here, and this is what it looks like. You know the uh, the floor here. You know we we pretty much created the fake lighting here, and because of those lights, we also get these cool-looking soft shadows here. And you see these are the reflections that I was talking about. One, two reflections here. The third reflection is not visible right now, but yeah. Also, the floor is fading into the environment, and it looks like this is a circular pedestal and. Yeah, it looks really cool. So you cannot achieve this effect using only materials. You all, you have to cheat a little. You, I mean, fake fall off is what is doing the trick for us. So this is going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. If you guys like the tutorial, be sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe. I have tons of new videos coming up. 
and yeah this is gonna be pretty much it thanks for watching everyone and hope you like the video and yeah have a nice day